Well, in this framework that basically sometimes masculinity goes through a process of maturity. And I think that mm -hmm. that's a really good way to describe it. The way he's saying, look, there, when you, when you lose masculinity, when essentially a generation is, is, um, being raised by men who are absent, you're really not learning almost anything about what the role of father is. And yeah. so you sort of are having to rediscover it. And of course, you're going to go through generations of confusion. Um, and then he's suggesting that it goes through these phases and it's interesting that, you know, he, he's referring to what's going on with Adam, um, Andrew Tate and some of these influencers about sort of this juvenile phase of masculinity. They're sort of stuck in a, the way a 15 year old boy that hasn't been properly fathered might think about what masculinity is all about. Um, but then even, I think what we're talking about in terms of like the playful present father, I would say that that's all of these things are some, somehow foundational. Yes. You want the father who knows how to w win and attract a woman. Like that's not a bad thing. That's an important part of masculinity. It certainly doesn't stop there. And then when you have a playful present father, absolutely. That's a critical element of masculinity and of fatherhood, but it doesn't stop there either. If it does, then it starts to look a little bit, you know, too close to a second mother. And that's where I think you want to have the visionary leading father, the father who understands that he's you know, the difference between sort of the present father and the, the Abrahamic visionary father really comes down to if the family as a team is trying to accomplish something really difficult and important. So anytime that, and this is where oftentimes we talk about, we use the language of like babysitter, um, sort of the heart of a babysitter versus the heart of a coach. So a babysitter is like, Hey, let's just play. And, you know, when you come home and the babysitter's done a really good job of entertaining your kids and, you know, everybody's safe and healthy. You're like, Oh wow. You just, you crushed it like hundred percent, you know, here's an extra amount of money, you know, please come back. Like, that's what you want from a babysitter. But if you showed up to your, uh, your, your son's, um, sports, uh, and that's all that was happening like, well, we didn't really practice anything. We didn't really develop anybody, but we had a lot of fun. You'd be like, I don't know if I want to send my kid to that team anymore. <laughs> I was hoping a little bit more from the coach than what I would expect from a babysitter. And I think we're sort of in the babysitter phase of, of masculinity or fatherhood. Like we're beginning to expect more from fathers than absence, right? Let's at least be present. Let's at least engage, right? But also that's not, that's not the essence of what you're, you're looking for as a father. That's what we're aiming at ultimately. So if you're, and a lot of times I'm talking to fathers who I think are ready to have the conversation about what are we actually aiming at? And this is where I will like, I want to stir up in them, the heart of a coach and a, a visionary leader. So you have to start to look into the future like Abraham and see something different and say, I'm going to lead my family into sometimes unsafe territory to take ground that our family has never taken before. And as a team, I'm going to lead my family into that world. And my wife has, as an amazing helper, um, that can, that can come alongside of me and, and really provide a lot of the nurturing and support that our family needs so that we can go to the next level and I can lead our family into difficult, uh, difficult areas, um, that that we can take new ground. So that, that's, that's the tension that I'm oftentimes experiencing. A lot of times what's happening is we don't, we don't, we don't have a proper understanding of the, of a sort of the ideal of fatherhood, which, you know, when people, we talk about that, that can really freak people out, but this is why I find Abraham so important. I'm not saying like that, that I have the ideal or, or that I've seen a, a single example of fatherhood that represents the ideal other than what I see in scripture in Abraham himself. I really think that's the whole point of why we have his narratives in, in scripture.